Thanks, Daz. Good afternoon, everybody. It's lovely to be with you again via Zoom. Um, a lot is talked about temptation uh, from religious communities um, and why it's a problem and the issues of overcoming it. Um, I'd like to try and tackle it from a, a positive position uh, today. Um, a, to see what the problem is, B, to see how it comes, and C, to see what the solution is. So temptation, well, why is it a problem? Well, when it comes to a particular uh, temptation and uh, acting on those temptations, it becomes a sin, going away from what God wants. There's there's all sorts of things that are temptations that are not a problem, uh, I, I guess, in life, um, other than perhaps for our health or... or, or um, or, or for other things like that. But when it comes to going away from God's uh, laws, going away from what God wants, then it becomes a problem. It becomes sin, and sin, the Bible says, leads to death. Now, uh, certain things will tempt different people. Uh, this is uh, this is a carrot, for, for those of you who uh, hopefully can see. Um, this is not a temptation to me. I have absolutely no problem in ignoring this. Uh, my dog, who is uh, in the other room, which is a good thing so he can't see this, uh, is incredibly tempted tempted by one of these. Um, it, he will eat uh, as many as you offer him or he can get his hands on. Um, and I guess that's a temptation to him. Uh, this... It is a temptation to me. Uh, the dog doesn't have a problem with it, or at least uh, he doesn't have the dexterity to get into it. So uh, he, he doesn't have a problem with it. Um, and I guess it's a temptation because I like the taste. Um, it, it's it's very nice. A, a, a glass of wine's good for you. Probably um, you, you have too many. But it's, it's a temptation to me, um, and I'm not not good at saying no to it. I'm also not good to go good at saying no to the cheese that goes with it, um, which the dog dog would also uh, like to eat. But, but different things are temptations to different people because we're different and we have different characteristics. But I'd like to have a look at what tempts us and why it tempts us. Uh, James, the, the writer in the New Testament, says this. Uh, it's James chapter 1 and verses 12 to 15. Don't need to turn there, but uh, uh, let me read that to you. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot tempt, be tempted with evil, and he te he himself tempts no one. But each one is tempted when he is lured, <coughs> lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So my dog that sees the carrot, uh, he uh, is is tempted by it. He's lured and tempted by his own desire. Uh, and uh, when he's tempted, uh, he uh, it, he uh, he 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 will it will eat it if he can. Um, uh, and if I've told not told him that he can, then uh, that's that's a bad thing for the dog. Um, uh, and. If God has set a, a rule, God has set a law, and, and we go against that, then that is long-term bad for us. We're going against what God's wanted. And, and uh, the Bible talks elsewhere about going away from him leading to death. The wages of sin is death. Uh, and that's that's obviously not a good thing. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Will you please turn to the first epistle of John, so John's letter uh, and chapter two, uh, and we'll read something from that. If you are still in 
um, Genesis chapter three. Uh, keeping a finger there would also be useful as we're going to go uh, between the two for a moment. So, Jane, uh, so first of John chapter two. And uh, we're going to be looking at verses 15 to 17. And this here, John describes the types of sin that are around. Uh, and he puts them into three categories. First of John, chapter two uh, and verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world. And this is these three categories of sin that he um uh, describes the desires of the flesh the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the father but is from the world and the world is passing away along with its desires but whoever does the will of god abides forever uh, the bible talks again elsewhere about a kingdom that the lord god is going to set up ruled over by jesus uh, and it, it talks about those who are found worthy by the lord jesus uh, having a, an entry into that kingdom to live uh, with the Lord Jesus, with the Lord God uh, for eternity. Uh, and, and hence, whoever does the will of God abides forever. Come with me uh, now uh, and just bear that in mind back to uh, Genesis chapter three. We've seen these uh, three types of sin, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eye eyes, and the pride of life. And I think that all temptation fits into those categories. Uh, back in Genesis chapter three and verse six. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and it was a tr the tree, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. Well, we've got those three categories of sin once more. Uh, the desires of the flesh. Um, she saw that it was good to eat, good for food, uh, that it was a delight of the eyes. Uh, the desires of the eyes and the pride of life. This um, desire to make one wise. So this fits into that category of uh, the types of sin that we have. But it's not the serpent that causes the woman to sin. It is what comes from, from inside. She sees that for her it would be good for food. It would... Uh, it looked good and that it would make her wise. And she thinks on that and acts on that. The serpent perhaps points it out. And that's the lie, uh, uh, along with you shall not surely die. And so we have sin going away from what God wants, starting in the world. And temptation, uh, because we share a common ancestry, it, it is um, common to us all. We're all tempted uh, to sin in some way. Um, we're all tempted to go away from God because we all think that, that we know better. I want to have another look at the way in which sin or temptation, sorry, works. Come with me, please, to uh, the Acts of the Apostles uh, and chapter five. Now, we perhaps need here a little bit of context. In Acts chapter five, um, the or in Acts chapter four, the the number of the disciples had started growing. There were people who needed looking after. People were selling um, their land uh, in order that they um, could help other people. Um, and um, at the end of Acts chapter four, it says. Um, no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. Uh, and then it talks about uh, Barnabas uh, selling a field and giving the money to the apostles so that it could be shared out so that could, people would not uh, have problems living. Uh, and then we get in chapter five and the first few verses, a contrast. 
uh, Acts chapter 5 and verses 1 to 6. With a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds, and bought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, was it not? Did it not remain your own? And after it was so sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that your you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Well, let's have a look at what it says about the temptation. Sorry. Uh, it says, why has Satan filled your heart uh, uh, to, um, sorry, I've lost my place. My apologies. Uh, Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back uh, part of the proceeds, keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? So it says Satan there, reading down uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ananias, Sapphira, comes in uh, about verse seven, at an interval of about three hours, his wife came in and not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. Uh, and she said, yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? It was Ananias and Sapphira agreeing together. Uh, to test the spirit of the Lord. Uh, they decided uh, to lie about it, uh, and they did between the two of them. Again, it's something internal. As James, uh, we read, says, the thought comes from the inside, uh, and we are tempted by our own lust. Ananias and Sapphira wanted the money, uh, and you can understand that, can't you? But the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in exactly the same way as Ananias and Sapphira, as Adam and Eve, as you and I. Come with me, please, to Luke and chapter four. And here we have the temptation of Christ. Uh, Luke and chapter 4 and verses 1 to 12. And Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness and was for 40, sorry, for 40 days being tempted of, by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days. But when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. The devil took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said to him, to you, I will give all this authority and their glory. But for it has been delivered to me and I will give it to whom I will. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And he took him to Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you fight your foot, strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, Is it it is, and Jesus answered him, it is said, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. 
Well, the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in the same way uh, that Eve was. We have these three examples of temptation, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And, and here the, in the temptations of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have exactly the same. And I believe it is an internal temptation. James has said you're tempted by by what draws you away. Well, let me read that one more time. Uh, each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Ananias and Sapphira were uh, lured and enticed by their own desire for, for money. Uh, Eve was tempted by her desire for the fruit, for food, because it looked good uh, and because it would give her... Um, uh, wisdom for want of a better word uh, the lord jesus christ could have gone through uh, the difficulties that or could have avoided the difficulties of his later life his his trial his crucifixion his death on the cross he could have become the king of the whole world he could have had all, all power he could have tested God's ability to save by throwing himself off the temple. He could have provided food for himself uh, from the bread, from the, the stones that he could have made bread. But none of these things were according to his father's will. What his father's will was, was to die on the cross to nail sin to the cross. And as we read through scripture, as we read through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, we see him time and time again answering temptation uh, with the words of his heavenly father. Verse eight, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Um, uh, verse 10 he will command his angels concerning you uh, to guard you and on their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone uh, man shall not live by bread alone uh, the lord jesus christ focused his life on obeying his heavenly father he ignored temptation he overcame temptation and in doing so, he became a perfect sacrifice. He became a sacrifice that could nail sin to the cross. And so our temptation carries on uh, and we sin. Romans uh, chapter six, please. I I've quoted from it uh, several times, but, but we'll we'll go there. Romans chapter six uh, and the, the the last verse reads for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord uh, and Romans chapter six talks to us about knowing that we will be tempted understanding that but trying to get away from it. And it says you've, you've got an option in, in life. You've got an option to follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can try and follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can try to follow the laws that God has written down that God has asked us to do. Or you can follow the world. You can try, you can be uh, like the rest of the world, you can decide to follow sin, it describes it. Uh, and it talks about this through the Lord Jesus Christ. It, verse 1 of Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? 
we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might not walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, uh, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been, has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. So it talks about baptism. It talks about being uh, fully covered in water uh, in a picture of uh, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm coming up out of that water in a picture of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says we can make that decision to be like Jesus. We can emulate him in that death and resurrection uh, and we can choose to serve the Lord God. It doesn't say that temptation won't have any power over us anymore. It doesn't say that we won't be tempted at all. It doesn't say that we won't sin. But it does say focus on trying not to sin. Verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. And then uh, reading down, um, to verse 17 but thanks be to god that you who want, were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching which you were to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness so it says we are now those who are baptized are slaves servants of God, those who are um, not are slaves, in effect, to sin, uh, and they obey sin. And so, temptation we see overtook, overtakes people. It. is all a matter of what we focus on. I, I spoke this morning about uh, trying to diet. Um, remembering not to eat can sometimes be a problem. You have to get into a habit. Um, we we did a, a Macmillan coffee morning yesterday and I, I ate too much cake. Um, I, and I realised halfway through the afternoon, having realised I'd eaten too much cake, that I didn't really like the fact that I'd eaten too much cake. I got into the habit of not eating so much. When you fall off that that bandwagon uh, and you realise that there's a problem, uh, and, and I think my body had um, realised that it was a, a, a servant of dieting, let's say, uh, as opposed to a, a servant of eating. And, and it's exactly the same. We can become servants of God or we can become servants of, of, of the world, of sin. And whilst Romans 6 says we're going to carry on sinning, it says try not to. Try and focus on, on going away from temptation. Uh, come with me, please, to Hebrews chapter 4 uh, and verse um, verse 14. Because we've talked about the Lord Jesus Christ. We've talked about trying to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. We've talked about a man who was tempted, but didn't sin. And, and so we see that he breaks that cycle of sin because sin leads to death. But Jesus didn't sin. Uh, and so his death couldn't hold him. So he rose again and he became that perfect sacrifice. He nailed sin to the cross. And just as the, the Lord Jesus died and rose again, he says, we can be like that uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter four and verse 14. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, 
let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathise with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we see that temptation comes from the inside. It comes in three categories, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And they're all from within. They're all what we want in some way, shape or form. And whilst uh, others around us may not help us, in the end, it's always our decision to act on temptation. But we see that Jesus was tempted like we are, but didn't sin. That he is able to sympathise with our weakness uh, and he is able to present us before the throne of the Father. And that's so that we can draw conf confidently to that throne of grace and find mercy. And through the Lord Jesus Christ, we, the tempted, can be in the kingdom. Thank you.